Ну, понятно, допустим, а если я просто буду выносить удар, сможете вы как-то на этот удар следить? Ну, вашей стеной, вашей стеной, а потом вашей схемой и вашей работой. You see, now this guy's got the right idea. When this cheap punch didn't work, just slap the shit out of this dude. And let that be a lesson to you guys. Never mess with a chi master. And speaking of masters, I am Nathan Brendan Masters. And today I'm asking the question, why do we love Bullshito? But before I get into that pressing, pressing question, I got to remind you about my book, Hexcraft Mechanics. This is issue two. It's a 56-page action-based urban fantasy project written and drawn by yours truly. If you're into things like Blade, Underworld, Constantine, I really think that you will like this project. So go over there, check it out. Would really love if you backed it. Proceeds help support me and the channel. It helps me to continue to create cool things like this. And the link is in the description. So let's jump into the video. Okay. <laughs> so uh, if you're familiar with the art of Bushido, uh, you've seen this clip before. And you know that this was supposed to be a chi knockout. The guy with the blonde hair was supposed to be able to knock you out with a chi punch. Uh, at no point did that occur. Fight commentary breakdowns. Our favorite Russian guy is back. Look at that kick. So this time he's shirtless to show off his muscles. St oh my goodness. If you guys haven't seen videos from fight commentary breakdowns, go check them out. They show stuff like this all the time, and it's hilarious. It is hilarious. That kick right there. Still showing off his snake mantis moves. Is this foot sped up, or is he? I don't know what the angle of that kick is, but a little ballerina move right up there. Man. But what shocks me about Bullshito artists is that a lot of them actually get students, such as this guy right here. And here's Choriak, our master teaching his students. He actually has students. What is that? <laughs> are those his sons, maybe? I think those are his sons. Those are not his students. <laughs> That's a pretty sick dragon pattern on his shirt, though. Oh, now he's critiquing his sons. Suka, you do it like this. <laughs> you would make a great break dancer, man. A whole generation of Russian break dancers could come out of this. Oh my goodness. Yes, he's actually critiquing them. <laughs> that guy's intimidated by the sheer, what do you call it, the sheer ugliness? Now, truth be told, I've delved into some bullshit on myself considering I make martial art films. Go through a series of choreographed moves and guess who's going to win that fight? Probably the person who stars in the film. I'm just guessing there. But generally what you don't see are martial art filmmakers trying to teach people martial arts unless they have actually some kind of solid background in it. But these guys teach you that you can defend yourself with things like chi blast or no touch knockouts. Something that at least would probably get your ass beat on the street. At worst, possibly get you killed depending on what the situation is. Chi, it flows throughout the body. Without it, you don't function. And it's a radio wave. Now, that's George Dillman. And if you haven't seen any of these other guys, you've definitely seen him. He was actually pretty popular at one point and got as far as Nat Geo as you can tell by the watermark there. So, let's see what he has to offer. Some of you already know what he has to offer. Bullshit! Without a doubt, George Dillman is a force to be reckoned with. He's a ninth degree black belt who has taught everyone from Muhammad Ali to Bruce Lee. Oh, 
and he's able to drop just about anyone using applications of pressure to certain points along the body. Take it there together. He's probably weak right here. Okay. Pressure point knockouts are the easiest way to put a person down. I can put the largest person that you can find in the world, and I've done this, with that finger, I can put him on the floor. It's the guy that's a big guy, he's mad at me on the street. But that's just the beginning. Dillman claims to have adapted this technique to where he can knock a person out without having to touch them. Use chi energy out of this hand, and we're going to affect up on the head of the third eye. The snap couple. Back, back, back. Jim! Okay, so we've entered Street Fighter territory at this point. And... Uh, I can't say anything about this clip that hasn't been said before, and if you've seen it before, there's not much more I can add. But I gotta admit that anytime I run across this by accident, there's a good chance that I'm gonna watch it. I always watch it. I don't I, I don't think I know a time when this pops up on my screen that I don't watch it. Obviously, you know, if it keeps popping up, you know, I'm probably not gonna watch it, but most of the times I haven't seen it in a while. And it pops up, and I'm like, I gotta watch this. Now, granted, uh, if you know how this turns out, you know, this guy tries to do this on somebody who is not his student, and he fails miserably. After seeing so many demonstrations, so many different techniques, so many different moves, you, you can't help but start believing. They're opening up another door in your mind. It's just unbelievable. I know I have chi energy. You can see it with the half moons. My chi is up now because of the filming. I have half moons in my fingertips now. This is what I love. This is what I love. He just made this up. He just pulled this out of his ass. I have chi. You can tell it because of the half moons on my fingertips. Now here's the question I have. Does he really believe it? Because I question whether he himself actually believed it because of what happens after he fails. That means the chi is, is just coming out. But is the mysterious energy called chi really what's giving Dillman and his followers such extraordinary powers? Or is it, as skeptics suggest, simply a form of hypnotic suggestion? In one corner, weighing in Whoa. at no more than 125 pounds, is chemist Luigi Garnaschelli. He thinks he can stand up to a knockout punch of chi because it doesn't exist. In the other corner, it's eighth degree black belt Leon J, one of George Dillman's top associates and fellow practitioner of the no-touch knockout. In fact, when we did the test on Luigi, who was not uh, ready to, to believe these things, or maybe it was just staying there, seeing what would happen. It didn't work. Now, here's what I find interesting. Dillman knows why it didn't work. The skeptic was, un was a, a totally non-believer. Non-believer. He could have stopped right there. That's the reason. That right there is the reason. But he goes on. Remember the half moons on his fingertips? He just pulled thing. He just pulled up out of like nowhere. Okay, he's got some more stuff. He's gonna pull up out of nowhere. Check this out. Plus, I don't know if I should say that on film, but if the guy had his tongue in the wrong position of the mouth, uh, that can also nullify it. So you have a no-touch knockout, something that uh, you may want to use to defend yourself in a bad situation and it depends on whether a person has their tongue in the right position? Really? What else, what else can I do to nullify this? Yeah, you can nullify it. You can nullify a lot of things done to you. In fact, you can nullify them if you raise those two big toes. Plus, if I say I'm gonna knock you out, and you raise one toe and push one toe down, can't knock you out. So you can raise two big toes, or you can raise one big toe and keep the other one down, and that will also nullify it, but he's not done yet. And then if I go to try again, you reverse it. If you keep doing this, I won't knock you out. 
thank you, George Dillman, for the laughter that you have brought into my life. I have to give that to you. Guys, I don't think I have to say this, but don't try to use this in a fight. Now, as a Chicagoan, I would be remiss not to do something on this next guy. Good old Count Dante. And let me, let, let me tell you, I am old enough to remember this guy's ads being in comic books. As a matter of fact, he is a member of the Black Dragon Fighting Society and is a self-proclaimed master of the Democ, which as you can see there, is, that's the Death Touch. So you, you don't want none of that, but make no mistake about it. This guy was a badass, but he was also batshit crazy. He started a Chinese martial art movie style dojo war here in America, in Chicago. He tried to blow up a dojo. Oh yeah, cartoonist Kayfabe did a whole video about this guy. I will link to that in the description. There's even a documentary about him scheduled for release this year by filmmaker Floyd Webb. His name was John Keehan, but he called himself Count Dante, the deadliest man alive. His fearsome face glared at you from comic book ads, daring you to learn his deadly fighting techniques. My name is Floyd Webb and I'm a filmmaker. One day I went searching for his grave and found only an empty patch of ground. Now I'm searching for the real man behind the legend. In 1964, when I was 11 and karate was young, I met Sensei John Keehan at the Second World Karate Tournament in Chicago. Back then, he was a respected fighter, promoter, and pioneer of martial arts events. Most importantly to me, he was one of the first to openly teach African American and other non-white students. Keehan would later change his name to Count Dante, becoming the crown prince of death. He wore a cape, challenged Muhammad Ali, was a hairdresser for Playboy Bunnies, had a pet lion in his dojo, sold used cars, was associated with mobsters of the Chicago outfit, and was consecrated as a voodoo priest. He is still one of the most controversial figures in the history of martial arts today. I will put a link in the description to this trailer. It's actually really good. I suggest everybody go over there and check it out. Uh, there's also another one, a longer one, that you might want to see too. Uh, but the question still remains, what is it about this insanity that we love so much? Video after video after video goes up and people still watch it. A lot of these same clips we've seen before, but we still stop, watch them shake our heads, sometime laugh. Is it just laughing at the gullible? Because I think all of us at some point have been gullible or have wanted something that may have been a little bit too good to be true or maybe uh, in this case give us superpowers. And I don't mean that as a joke. I mean that's generally what this would be if it were to work. We'd be able to do things that we've seen in comic books and video games using our chi to affect change. If you're paying for this, it's taking money out of your pocket for results you're not getting. But then again, it can also be downright dangerous in some situations. Now, granted, when this guy pretends to, like he's going to some kind of convulsion, you're going to bust out laughing. But that woman was actually hurt doing this bullshit martial art. And if you didn't know what was supposed to be happening there, she was supposed to be putting up some kind of chi wall or something to block him. It didn't work. Of course, let the sensei tell it. It, it did work. The, the effect was just delayed. You know, she's really got to learn how to focus that chi. And he's still going at it. Doing what a good sensei would instead of taking care of his obviously injured student. This is a yellow bamboo, by the way, if you really want to get your, your chi on. You know, get that, that chi. You know, get those half moons on your fingertips. You might want to check these guys out. I hear this particular instructor is uh, top notch. Where were you guys? Where the fuck were you guys? Because it's obviously their fault. Now, before I jump into this, I'm going to say flat out, I do not have a problem with Sistema. It looks functional enough to me. 
I'm not one of those people who think that everything needs to be able to, you know, you don't always have to beat the greatest MMA fighter because if you ever got into a conflict on the street, chances are you're not going to be fighting the greatest MMA fighter. You're going to be fighting some drunk knucklehead. With that being said, I find this ridiculous. More chi magic. Look at this. Ooh, look. He made him flip with his chi. Check that out. That's all chi power right there. Boom! They had to slow it down. Now, I know that there are people who actually do believe in chi and, you know, are actually serious pr practitioners of certain type of arts and things. But those guys aren't these guys. What? And on the body as well. You control on your own body. Now, am I wrong here? Or is he suggesting to use a flabby man boob to deflect knife attack? That's what this is looking like to me. Let me know in the comments if I got that whole thing wrong. Now, I've seen some Sistema knife defenses that are pretty good. I mean, they're just as good as any other that's taught in uh, martial arts. Uh, this right here is not necessarily one of them. And what you need to work on is to have the knife fit in your own hand. His deflections seem to be based on guiding the knife in a certain way with parts of your body, which is exactly what you don't want to do with the knife. Why do we love Bushido? I can tell you why I love Bushido. It's always good for a laugh. And uh, it's enjoyable to watch people think that they can become those martial art heroes that they saw on television and in movies in real life. But what's not funny is people actually losing money to this kind of thing and in some cases getting hurt. And in fact, if you actually do this, some of these things out on the street, you will get your ass kicked. No doubt about it. So you guys take it easy. Nathan Brennan Masters. Don't forget about Hexcraft Mechanics. Link is in the description. Asta. Don't look back, we're here to stay A life we knew would come one day And this is it, the borderline To where the future leaves us behind The fire will burn and never die Looking through the eyes of a brand new life It's so